Hello, gentle viewers, and welcome to another episode of Alistair Reviews It. And today, I'm going to be doing a humble book haul. So this is my New Year New Books. These are all of the books I've gotten over the uh, Christmas season uh, that were bequeathed to me or um, given to me in one way or another, including me giving it to myself, which I think counts because it was ho the holidays. First book, Now I Rise, the second book in the Conqueror saga by Kirsten White. So I finished And I Darken, which I will be talking about more when I do my wrap up for January, but I really, really, really loved the first book and I immediately needed to grab the second and the third for this Conqueror Sega. And so far I am very much enjoying this gender bent retelling of Vladimir the Impeller. Next I have Aurora Rising. Uh, this was given to me by a friend. Honestly, I don't know much about it. I know it's sci-fi and I think it's YA. I'm not sure. It might be YA. It might not be. And it's probably one of the books I will be picking up this year. I'm trying to expand my horizons. I think this year I'm going to be reading a lot more self-published fantasy and a lot more just sci-fi. So this might make that list. And also, my, it seems like I have a lot of books this time, but I don't like honestly like I barely bought any of these books because I am trying my damnedest to finish as many books as I can that I've already bought before I start new ones because I do not want to put myself in a bad habit and I feel like reading is definitely kind of like the best Re reading and buying books is definitely kind of like the best of the bad habits that you can you know have but it's definitely one that I have. And one that I am working out, gentle viewers. Yes, I am. Do you guys have this habit? Because I do. Then I have uh, Thunderhead by Neil Schusterman. This is the second book in the Scythe trilogy. I have the first one. I have the third one. And this one just rounds it out beautifully. I would talk about this, but I actually have a Scythe review that I can put below if you would like to know more about this trilogy. It is not a dystopia, but a utopia. And then funnily enough, I did not have one of my favorite book series of all times. Well, I had, I have the first book in the special 10 year leather bound edition, but I didn't actually have the normal edition. Look how gorgeous that is. My husband finally got me the Mistborn of the Final Empire, the first book in hardback and I think so I talked about before when I was gonna do my reread that I was gonna do my reread using the leather bound I'm torn between the leather bound and this one so we'll see how that goes but speaking of Mistborn he also got me the Well of Ascension which is the, the second book and according to him this was actually pretty hard to find in hardback so bravo bravo and I think again these artists like these covers are just totally gorgeous they're so good they're like very renaissance honestly and if you haven't read mistborn i would rec i would say mistborn it's a the palette for everybody you know it's like if you're going to devil into fa fantasy everybody says it try mistborn because there's something there for everybody and then from there you can kind of narrow down what you like more than other things and follow your own fantasy path but mistborn is one of if not the best way to start your foray into fantasy next i have the city we became by nk jemison and i am very excited to read this book but i also feel like she's gonna break my heart because she's done that before so i'm excited but also i'm not i'm not, I'm not sure if this is a uh, a series or just a standalone yet. I haven't looked much into it. The only thing I know is that this is, a, this is an urban fantasy that takes place in New York City and different bur boroughs of New York City represent different powerful people in this book. So I love New York City. I love fantasy. I love N.K. Jemison. So hopefully I will love this book. Next I have The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett and I am... I've wanted to 
read this one for a while. I think that this might be one of the books that my husband and I actually pick up this year. It's a historical fiction uh, where two sisters kind of lead very, very different lives because uh, I, one of them at least I know is a white passing and the other one isn't. And the other one lives her life like she's white and the and the other one doesn't. And I'm very curious about it. Very curious about it. It, uh, it's gotten really great reviews and I've not heard one bad thing about this book so I'm actually very excited to read it. Next I have The Prophets, a novel by Robert Jones Jr. So I grabbed this one. It was on the, uh, sorry, it was the book of the month I think for January. It's one of the book, book books of the month for January and it intrigued me because not only is this an Achillean book, an MM book, it's also a historical fiction where two slaves on a plantation love each other, but then they're confronted by the prejudices of other people against their very natural relationship. So, yes. I don't know. I might actually try to read it. I want to try to get my husband to read this, but he's been very busy. So I might read it first and then force him to read it if I really like it. In February, I'm considering doing... An Achillean TBR, an MMTBR, you know, because it's February, the month of, you know, Valentine's Day and love and stuff. That might be a thing I do, but at the same time, I've recently really gotten into progression fantasy and I am on a binge and I'm torn between curating, you know, my monthly reading goals and really just following my reader heart. So... We'll see. We'll see what happens. Next, I have Angel After the Fall. Uh, this is the first comic book. Well, this is the library edition that takes place right after Angel Season 5. And uh, I know that there's, I think there's five iterations of this. This will be the first one that I read itself. I was just so traumatized. <laughs> I was traumatized by, by the end of, uh, of season five of Angel. Not that it was bad. It was actually pretty amazing. It's one of the best series endings that I've ever seen. It really shouldn't have been a series ending. It should have been like an evolution for the series. Oof. But I've got it. I've got Angel season six, really, um, after the fall volume one. And I'm going to read this and then continue on because... This kind of gets into something else I have. So I've, I also have Angel and Faith Season 9. But this isn't really Season 9. It's a companion to Buffy Season 9. And that's why they call it Season 9. Because they didn't have 9 seasons. But it focuses on Angel and Faith within the Buffy comics. And it's their own little part of it, I guess. And there's three of these library editions. I'm going to try to get my hands on the other ones. But I want to read this one first. I'm very, 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 very excited. Just gr growing mine and my husband's Buffy collection. Uh, one library edition at the time. So, <laughs> I don't know. It's gorgeous, though. It's It truly is gorgeous. Like, oh, look at that. Oh, sorry. Oh, look at that. That is Tre Gorge. Next, <laughs> I guess this is a lot of Buffy stuff. I have Queen of the Slayers uh, from Nancy Holder. So I believe that this was considered to be Buffy canon before they decided to do the comic books. And let me tell you, this is the best alternate reality version of how things went in the Buffyverse. It is so good. I remember my, me and my sister got, these, got this book when we were much, much younger after we finished season seven. And we wanted to see if there was any continuations. This was a continuation. And it was very, very, very good. And um, recently got it. And I, I'm, I'm very excited to read it again. And see if I feel the same things as I felt the first time reading it. If you are somebody who is a Buffy fan and finished all the way through Season 7. And you're curious about an alternate, I guess, way things could have gone then I would definitely pick up this book by Nancy Holder. Definitely would. Last of the books before I pick up some books that were sent to me is the magnum opus of the gifts my husband gave me um, for Christmas. He got me Warbreaker, the library edition from Brandon Sanderson. And this is one of my favorite books. It was my favorite book of 2019. And I have it on mass market paperback. Oof. Oh, did you guys hear that crack? 
Oof. And this is such a gorgeous book. What I really like about these library editions is not only do they have great art in it, but they include all of the covers, uh, both American and international. And the ink, the, uh, the gold plating, um, the art in between um, different chapters is just gorgeous. Like this, this is how I want to do my Warbreaker reread. And I think, like I talked to my husband, it's the same thing for these books as for these books. Is the only way we're gonna going to read them is we're going to set our, our dining room table, a clean dining room table, possibly wearing gloves and not eating or drinking anything near them. If we need to take breaks, we'll take breaks. But we, we shall preserve these masterpieces of art. Let me go into the lovely books that I received um, over the course of the last couple months. Um, that I haven't really been able to fully, if at all, unwrap until now. Feast your eyes. So from Patrick Walton. Hi, Alistair. Enjoy your gift. I got Fire from Heaven. A novel of Alexander the Great, Merinault. Would we consider this an Achillean novel? I would, so I'm guessing this is a historical f fiction rendition of Alexander the Great. So Alexander the Great is is one of my favorite historical figures. My family actually named me after Alexander the Great, but they wanted to use a Gaelic word for Alexander, which is Alistair. So this is a very, very cool book. And plus it looks, look at it. this book and what I'm wearing right now. I feel like that's a vibe or something. Like, am I doing it right? Am I doing it right, Gen Z? Is this a vibe? I think it's a vibe. Next, I have... Okay. Alistair J. Patton. Ooh, this is super... This is super fancy, Jordan. Alistair, I hope this finds you and Zach doing well. I know that the enclosed book does not fit your normal genre of books. I think if you give it a chance though you will find it enjoyable i have read it a couple of times and liked it immensely this is like we need to get something like this this is so nice oh look at that that's so nice let me check it out okay this is freshman pledge the magic of love Ooh, it's a wiccan book it's a wiccan book about love and you guys know how much I like Practical Magic, and this seems like a pretty easy read. Maybe this could be part of my Achillean reads, so we'll see. We shall see. Thank you very much, Brian. Next I have from David Legman. Uh, David Legman sent me The Chronicles of Thomas Covenant, The Unbeliever. See it? Look at that. That's pretty, it looks pretty. Mm. That smells good. So I, I think I'll definitely check it out. It's a fantasy book. Love fantasy books. Thank you very much, David Legman. And I think I'll reach out to you in correspondence. Next, I have the first book from a new publishing house, Global Collective Publishers, called uh, Pure Land. Pure Land, I think. Pure Land by Zarar Said. They reached out to me. They seemed really, really cool. And this is one of their first books that they published. They said, and while it falls outside of the genres you typically review, I hope you will enjoy reading it. So, the story of Pure Land is recounted through an assassin who is accused of heinous acts of terror. He begins his testimony by claiming responsibility for the murder of the Nobel Prize winning physicist Salim Agna, Aga. Salim Aga. To explain his motive, he begins by telling Salim's story and the tragic relationship he had with his beloved nation, Pure Land. And he also sent me some tea to go along with it, because this is uh, an Indian book, and I'm very, very excited about it. Um, this might actually be one of the books that my husband and I read together. I, did, I really like reading these kind of books with my husband, because then we have like very long discussions about what's going on. Um, that we can't have because he's not the biggest fantasy fan though. I'm still trying um, But he gets me into a lot of really cool contemporary 
or uh, historical fiction, um, or just really dramatic, or horror, you know. Thank you very much. From David Legman, I have Earthsea, the first four books. And I've heard a lot of... Oh, that's right here. It's the first four books of Earthsea. I've, I've heard some really good things about this book series. And I think... From what I've heard, it's like it's definitely it's definitely very much classic fantasy, and it's definitely consumable from people from all ages. A lot of Ursula Le Guin's books are books I want to get into, so this is such a perfect addition to my library. So <laughs> thank you. <laughs> that was weird. Um, so thank you very 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 much, uh, David. Thank you very much. And last but most definitely not least. A Jeremiah, a novel by Robert Kane. He says, I've enclosed my book, Jeremiah, knowing it's not your genre of book. Uh, maybe you could read it as a palate cleanser between epic fantasy novels. So I tried to write it, it so as Christian or secular readers would enjoy it. If it is not your cup of tea, then perhaps Zach or a friend or family member might enjoy it. So I haven't read much uh, Christian fiction in the past but i'm definitely not opposed to it and i'm definitely not opposed to this being an excellent palette cleanser and oh my gosh it has cards in it too yeah i'm de i'm on, on honestly i'm definitely not opposed to christian fiction because a lot of the stories in the bible are very interesting but i feel like they're not fleshed out and if they are fleshed out in a Christian fiction book like this, it might, like you said, be a lot more palatable um, than not. So he he wrote this book to be um, very entertaining for both uh, Christians and the secular community. So I am very curious. I think this will make a very good addition to my current library. Thank you so much, Robert. Um, I really appreciate you sending me one of your books. Thank you. So that doth concludeth my new year, new books, book haul. Um, how did your guys' new year go? How was the first month of 2021 treating you? Um, again, I started my Discord. So, sorry. I started my Discord. So Discord it up down below. And I wanted to take a moment and mention that I will be doing my review for Black Sun here soon. And... And now the official announcement is forthcoming, but we will be doing a read along of the first book of of the Expanse Leviathan Wakes by James Corey starting in, starting February 1st. So I will be putting out how we're going to be divvying this up, uh, what's going to happen. But I'm definitely going to be doing a live stream at the end of the month uh, to go over it so we can all talk about this book. I want to do a bit more live streams, and I just just like I talk about, I want to do a lot more sci-fi this year. So, let's do it, guys. Anyways, adios, gentle viewers. Hoping that you guys are, have a very safe and wonderful time. Hasta luego.